most of us use two or more Google calendars. Now these can be your personal Google calendars or might be the work calendars or maybe a combination where you use at the rate gmail.com for your personal life and at the rate your domain.com which is Google Apps for your for your business. It is really painful to manage these multiple Google calendars because behind the scenes you are the same person. The one option can be that you can share your uh, calendar with each other, but it's it. This is very limited, right? It's it it will only allow you to layer your calendar on one on each other. It does not merge two different Google calendars. So in this video, I will show you how you can merge two different Google calendars with a different approach, and it should work absolutely fine. So. Before I share my screen and, and show you how will it work, let us first understand our use case and then move towards setting it up. So here is our scenario. I have two Google calendars. The first one is my uh, work calendar and I've named it work at mydomain.com. Second one is my personal calendar and I have named it personal at mydomain.com. Now the solution that I'll show you in a minute will work regardless of whether you're using at the rate Gmail IDs or at the rate uh, your domain.com Google Apps IDs. So let's dive in the in the use case. What I want uh, exactly is if any new event is created in my personal account, I want that event should be created in my work account and vice versa so that regardless of which calendar I'm looking at I know what's coming up for me and if I have shared my availability with with outside people when they try to do a free busy lookup they should be able to see that I'm free or busy at a specific time regardless of either they're looking up my work calendar or my personal calendar and for me it's gonna be so easy because rather than you know switching back and forth I will you know I can just go to any calendar the personal one or the work one and I can see what's coming up next for me so we will be using Zapier uh, for this solution now if you don't know what Zapier is you can visit zapier.com to know more about them but in a nutshell it it's a service which connects one application to another via APIs behind the scenes. And it really has two main features, which are triggers and actions. And it helps defining small automations saying, if this trigger happens in application one, then do this action in application two. So what we're gonna do now is we will configure Zapier and we will create two different Zaps. The first one we will create uh, that will capture any new event created in our personal Google Calendar and will create that same event in our work calendar. And the second will do absolutely opposite. The second will create any new event uh, which is created in the work account into our personal accounts so this way you know any event regardless of which calendar it was created on it should be merged on the on the other one too but there is a catch if you do this we will be creating a loop so if any new event is created in our personal one that will be created in our work work one which is fine but then the second zap which we have that will treat the new event in our work calendar as a new one and will try to create it in our personal account. Fortunately, Zapier offers something called filters. And I'm just going to show you in a minute that by playing a bit with, uh, with these filters, we should be able to stop this loop and let it merge absolutely fine. So now I guess uh, that was kind of overview of solution. If you understand it right, let's go ahead and configure it right away. 
So I'm on uh, Zapier.com. I'm just going to create an account. If you already have an account, that's perfect. Uh, so let's make it from my work email address. And let me give you a quick password and then sign up. So once I'm in, I'm going to create my first Zap. And if you recall the solution that we had, the first Zap is going to create uh, an event in our work calendar as soon as an event is found in our personal calendar. So first trigger is to connect to Google Calendar with our personal account. So I'm going to search for calendar, Google Calendar, and I'll say uh, new event search or also new event, right? Any new event is created in the personal account. I'm going to connect the account and account will be the personal one. I will give all necessary permissions and let me just call it personal so it's, it becomes easy to identify later. Test it. Perfect. Save and continue. And now Google will, Zapier will ask out of your personal calendar, which calendar should I look at? So I'm just going to make this one. This is my primary calendar under my personal one. Continue. Now Zapier would like to test it, but uh, and then it says that I should have at least one appointment there so that it can it can test that out. But I don't have that, so I'm just gonna skip the test, and that's okay. Now, what is the action? The action is to create an event in our work calendar. So this time, under action, we are gonna connect to our work account. So again, I'm gonna search for Google Calendar. And this time I will say create detailed event and I will connect my work account. Give it all the permissions required and let's call it our work account. Test it. It worked. Save and continue. Now Zapier, because it, it's creating an event in my work calendar, it's asking for some necessary details such as what should be the summary, description, and so on. So I will say it should create event in my work calendar's primary calendar. Summary will be the summary, which is in my personal uh, calendar. So I'll say summary. Description, again, will be the same description. Location is, I'm just mapping the field. Uh, start time and the end time the rest of the information is is optional so i'm just going to skip it for now but one more thing we need to pay attention to now what we are doing is when we create the see create the zap it will work uh, but it will also create a loop as soon as we create the second zap so what we should do is we need to have something which is unique so that zapier can look at that and avoid looping it back and forth. So under description, I'm just going to mention a snippet which Zapier will add every time it creates a new event. So I will say, because this one is creating personal to work, right? So let me just name it like this. And the snippet I will add under description is, let's say, personal to work, okay? And I will just copy it. So now I will say continue. So that zap is ready. We don't have the required uh, fields yet because we don't have any appointment. That's okay. We will skip test and continue. And our zap is now ready. That's first zap. Now let's create one more zap, which is the other way around, which will create an event as soon as it finds it in our work calendar to our personal calendar. So let's call it work to personal, okay? The trigger app, this time it's gonna be our work calendar. So let's say any new event is found in our work calendar. Then go ahead and create. And under work calendar, look at the primary calendar because you might have multiple calendars. So under work calendar, look at the primary one, which I have. I don't have any appointment for now, so I'll go ahead and skip testing. 
and then continue now what's the action the action is to create that event in my personal calendar so I will now connect to my personal calendar and I will say create a detailed event this time it's going to be personal if you want to test it though it's not required but just to be on safe side okay so now it which calendar should it look at from my personal so it's going to look at my personal calendar and then summary will be the summary from our trigger which is from work account description it's going to be description location again the same thing required uh, start date and end date so even begins and even ends rest of the information is optional and here this time under description we are going to add a unique field uh, unique snippet and this time let's say work to uh, personal you can you can put it any I mean make sure that it should be something which you usually don't add in the description when you create calendar events okay so this is done and let's continue okay so let's keep test and continue so now what we have is two zaps one is creating any event which it finds in personal to our work calendar the second one is creating any event uh, which it finds in our in our work calendar to our personal one but so far it will be looping right so if it create personal to work under work it will find that new event again and it will try to create in personal so we need we don't want that we want to stop this loop so what we will do is under this we are saying that every event it adds from personal to work zap it should add a description to that that's personal to work so we will copy this snippet okay and we will go to our work to personal and here between our trigger and action we will add a filter by clicking this plus icon click on filter and here you can define that this action will only be can only be pursued in case if the description event uh, description where is the description here yeah, event description does not contain or maybe you can do does not exactly match it depends uh, what you're putting at so does not contain personal to work right so let's click on continue skip it continue and let's turn it on so that zap is is working fine now okay now let's go back to the other one which is this one and add the filter there too so i'm just going to uh, copy some information from here i don't i just forgot what was the snippet i added in this one okay it was work to personal so now i'll go back where i'm creating personal to work i'll add a filter here in this filter i'll say only continue and create this if the calendar description does not contain work to personal save it skip test continue turn it on okay see in the dashboard so both of our zaps are now turned on so just to recap before we test it out what we exactly did we created two zaps personal to work which is going to create new events uh, in our work calendar as soon as they are uh, they are found in our personal calendars second one is going to do absolutely vice versa okay but in case just to avoid this loop the first calendar when it creates from personal to work it will add a snippet which will say personal to work so that when it comes to this one this one can take that that snippet as a filter and it should stop the loop and vice versa so now let's go ahead and test it so the first one is personal to work so i'll go to my personal calendar this is my personal i'll go to calendar and under calendar let me just create one for friday and let's call it zapier test and that's our personal to work okay and i save it so ideally now i've created in personal so it should be created by itself in my work calendar 
So what I'm going to do now is I'll go to my work account, which is this one. I log into Google Calendar. And then it does not show up yet in my Friday because Zapier, by default, the plan uh, which I'm on, which is free plan, uh, which is good enough for me for now, it it uh, it synchronizes every 15 minutes. That's the cycle. If you want to be quicker, then you need to uh, go for premium plans, which I guess starts with $15 a month and so on. So just to make you avoid uh, waiting for 15 minutes, I will click here and make it run manually. So let me run it. Let's see if it catches. Okay, so it found our one event in our personal calendar and it created that in our work calendar. So let's go back in our work calendar and see. It's not here yet. Maybe I can just refresh and see. Okay, it's here. So it created the same appointment in our work calendar as it was in our personal calendar which is perfect. Now let's do opposite. This time we are in our work account and let's create one account here, one appointment, this time Zapier test and it's going to be work to personal, okay? Save it. Maybe we can uh, just change the time a bit so we can easily uh, differentiate them. Okay, so it's four to five on Saturday. Now ideally that should be created here, but it should it should not loop, right? It should not be creating duplicate events. So for this, instead of waiting 15 minutes again, I'll go to my work to personal and run it manually. So if you see here, instead of one, it found two two events. You know why? Because there were two events. Now we need to make sure that it only creates one. It should not duplicate that. So let's see. It says it created, so I will now go to my personal account, and if you see, it has created just one, which means our filter worked absolutely fine. And to prove that or to show you that, I'll go to my dashboard, and under dashboard in work to personal, I will go to history to see the task history. When I click on this, you will see two events here. The first one was successfully created as we want it. But the second one, just the second, uh, yes. But the second one was filtered. Why? Because it did not meet uh, the filter which we which we configured. So we said only create uh, event if the description does not contain personal to work. But in our case, it did. So it stopped that task, which means no loop. So I hope this was maybe a bit lengthy, but still uh, it, it might help you to merge your calendars. And in case if you have any questions or any feedback, just put your comments below and I'll be happy to help. Thank you so much and uh, have a wonderful day.